Hey y'all, Rob the American here and welcome to Tales of Manchester and of Watches. So I think y'all can tell by the way I'm dressed, I am back in Manchester. Uh, oh, and green is the color of the day y'all. Look at that. It looks like my mommy dressed me but I did this all on my own. Now Alexis said it's going to be about 47 degrees Fahrenheit today so that's what? Um, Subtract 30, uh, 17 divided by 2, 2 times something is what that, whatever that is in Celsius. Um, it's a bit gray day outside, but um, we, are, we are sitting in Spinning Fields today, which is a office complex um, and restaurants, and, and um, it's a really interesting place. And um, behind me is a restaurant called the Ivy. And that's, I think it's one of those hip uh, celebrity kind of restaurant type places. Now I've not been in, I imagine if I try to get through there, the, the, the bouncer would probably not let me in, um, but uh, maybe we'll give it a go. And on my wrist today, y'all, is something that y'all haven't seen from me in a while. Uh, and it is my Grand Seiko. Uh, this is, oh God, what do they call it? Uh, melting snow in the spring on Mount Awate. <laughs> That's a mouthful. But look at the dial on that, y'all. Now, I did a video way back. Oh, gosh, I think it was my second or third video uh, at John Rollins Library focusing on this watch. Uh, the dial on this, it never ceases to amaze. But that's not our focus today. Let's, 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 get, back, let's get back on track. So since I've been back in the UK, one of the first things I did, of course, was go back on the watch hunt. So I found myself... Um, in St. Anne's Square in Manchester, which is kind of like the watch uh, homeland in, in Manchester for some awesome watches. Looking for the new models that have, had been um, announced at Watches and Wonders, what's that, two, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And unfortunately, <laughs> Tudor had a couple, but m nobody else had any of the new models. Now I know that they will trickle in over time, so we will we'll stay on the hunt. But in the meantime, um, in the excitement that, that is Watches and Wonders, I had done a, f uh, a video um, about some of the brands that really caught my eye. And there were so many that were released all at the same time that some of them got left behind. So what I thought I'd do today is I'm, I picked three more brands that, that have announced some interesting watches and we'll talk about them. And one interesting brand that came out with a watch that uh, I don't know what they were thinking. So let's get started. Our first brand is a brand that I don't think I have ever mentioned on my channel before. Uh, and it's considered one of the holy trinities of watch brands. So that includes Patek Philippe, um, Audemars Piguet, and this one, which is the Vacheron Constantin. Now Vacheron makes some spectacularly beautiful watches, as you can imagine. Um, they're known for their dress watches, but they also have a sporty range called the Overseas. Now, in Watches and Wonders um, this year, Vacheron has announced new addition to their Overseas uh, lineup, and they have this spectacularly beautiful green sunburst style. Have a look, y'all. So they've got three versions of it on a chronograph, a dual time, and a date only and I think they look smashing wow look at that and now I'm a simple guy and I like a simple watch most of the time so I'm my focus is that date only that look at that y'all wow and it, the case and the bracelet is all solid pink gold and in person oh what a stunner what a stunner now the price is a bit of a stunner too that retails for let me get this right, 58,500 pounds. And I'm sure it's even more in US dollars, but wow, y'all. Now, I'm, that's probably one I'm gonna be worshiping from afar, but you know, uh, a guy can dream, can he? Our next brand is another brand that I haven't really spoken about um, on my channel before, and it's Tag Heuer. And to be honest, the reason I haven't spoken about it is Tag Heuer is a brand that has never really interested me. And I think that's because I don't believe I am their target 
demographic. It's I think it's a young man's watch. I think they're they've got some great pieces, but I think I'm I'm, I'm on the other side of that. But this this watch, I can tell you, has uh, made me a believer. Now, Tag had introduced the skipper. Oh gosh, was it a year or two years ago? I'm, I think it was about a year ago. That really caught my eye. It's a fun um, watch. I, 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 it fits really well. I think it looks amazing. Now that watch retails for about 6,200 pounds. But this year at Watches and Wonders, they debuted a gold version of, of it. And have a look at this, y'all. It is the same watch, but with a solid gold case. It's a wow. They need to change the name from Skipper to, I don't know, uh, Captain. So instead of a sailboat skipper for the regular skipper, you have a ship's captain for the gold skipper. <laughs> I think it looks great and I cannot wait to, to try it on. Now, obviously being a gold case, the price is, is quite, um, shall we say, healthy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the Tag Heuer gold skipper, I think it's a winner. And what can you say about Cartier? Y'all know I, I'm a fan. I've done a video already with the, the Rondé, the round uh, case Cartier. Um, I love their tank watches, but what they have uh, the Santos watch, and that's been the focus of Watches and Wonders this year. Now, I've tried on their regular Santos many, many times, and I really love it. I've never pulled the trigger on it, but I think it's, I think it's a classic, classic watch. And they've got some updates to um, the Santos this year I, th I find very appealing. The first one is the Santos Dual Time. Now, have a look at this. It's got the regular time, and then in a sub-dial, a second, a second uh, time zone. I think it looks great. That gray dial, I think it, I can't wait to, I can't wait to see that in person. And even more interesting is the Santos Dumont Rewind. Now, have a look at this. Look at that red, y'all. Wow, that is, that red is on fire. That is amazing. But you have to really look close at it to, to, that reveals its party trick and why, the, why they, they call it the rewind and it tells the time backwards all right so instead of clockwise it's counterclockwise or as the Brits would say anti-clockwise now I don't know if I could live with this watch on a daily basis because y'all know how I struggle with numbers and and addition and subtraction and stuff like that but I think it's I think it's really fun I and I can't wait to see that one in person and finally y'all uh, we're going the opposite route. Now this is from a brand, Zenith, and I'm a big fan of their watches, and Zenith has been around um, for a long time. They used to make movements for Rolex. I mean, they are a quality brand, and I've tried on many Zeniths over the years, and but have never pulled the trigger on one. But <laughs> but this watch is not gonna help, uh, help their case with me. And this is the Zenith, Defy Revival A6348. Yeah, I want to get that. I want to get that right. Have a look at this orange uh, monstrosity. <laughs> it's a revival of a watch that Zenith came out with in way back in 1969, and believe me, they should have left this dead and dead and buried. Orange is a hard color to pull off anyway, but it's 37 millimeter case and a very uh, odd shaped case shape and uh, I think it's blah, blah. and it retails for almost 7,000 pounds now I've got a couple of alternatives to that I, I find more interesting uh, on two different on budgets and one of them is a Doxa that's D-O-X-A and Doxa makes some some great watches um, I'm gonna have a look at this one this watch I think I think it looks great if you if you want an orange watch this is the way to go and this retails for right around a thousand pounds. I think it's a great watch and a great price as an alternative. Now, if your budget allows more, let's say, um, freedom of movement, um, have a look at this. Now, this is the uh, Patek Philippe Aquanaut. Now, the dial itself is an orange, but it's got all kinds of orange features in the strap. Uh, again, another amazing watch. Is a, a watch. Now, this one <laughs> costs a little bit more, and this retails for about 47,000 pounds. Now, that's if you could get it. You Believe me, y'all, 
you can't get this watch. You can't walk into Patek and say, I want this watch. <laughs> They'll pretty much laugh at you out the store. If you're willing to go in the gray market, you could pay a lot more for this watch. But again, if your budget, if your budget is allows, uh, you know, I say go for it. But either one of those, I think, is a more interesting alternative to the Zenith. Mm -mm -mm. All right, y'all. That's it for me to. Idiot. All right, y'all. That's it for me today. Sun's trying to come out, so I think that's a really good sign. Um, and we want to thank the really nice folks over at Pret a Manger in Spinning Fields for giving me permission to film here today. So if you find yourself in Manchester, come on in through Spinning Fields, have a wander on around. Uh, and then when your feet can't take it anymore, come on in to Pret, get yourself something to drink and something to eat, and be sure and tell them that Rob the American sent you. Uh, and if you enjoy this video, uh, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And join me next time for some more Watch Chat. Y'all be well.